Hi guys, so um, today I'm gonna share with you some items uh, from Local King Rubber Stamp that I picked up myself. Uh, I am gonna use probably the Magic Mushrooms which were sent for me uh, by Local King free of charge for my review, but um, the review is really of these other items that I had picked up. So I made a card like this the other day and I showed it to you guys real quick um, because right now it's tough with the kids home and I got my order in and I wanna play with these things so it's like, I could just wait around, but at the same time, I wanted to use them. So I did make something on my own, which I know is a sin. I'm very sorry. But I am going to do something like this today to recreate um, what I did here. So I just did a little background, and then we, uh, or I used this really sweet uh, set. And I was thinking I can move on. I can use another stamp set. Um, but you might want to see this one in action. So this is the Cheap Friends, C-H-E-E-P, Friends. I'm sorry about the lighting. It's because there's a lot of shiny stuff here. Um, that we're going to be using. I am going to be using the uh, words background, which I absolutely love. Um, I have this smile. It came from this set. Uh, I don't remember the name of this set, but I'll have the links for everything for you guys. And I'm going to use some glossy paper because I like the way that looks, but you can stamp it on whatever paper you have. And this is a piece of stamping paper, and I'm going to do the background on this, but this is not the best blendable paper, but that's what I'm going to use. And then today I figured we should just try out the markers since I had picked up um, their uh, special, which was basically if you buy the pack of 60. So I have, I'm probably not going to open this one right now. I'm probably just going to open the little guy. But we have the 60 markers, which obviously has 60 different colors, and it's super cute. I love the case. I love everything about this. Um, but these 24, a lot of these same colors are in there, but obviously there's more varied hues in that big set. Um, so really cute. Um, yeah, so we'll open this guy up and we'll use him. Uh, again, she always, Lisa, over there at Local King, I'll have the link to her YouTube, um, and obviously to the store, and our extra 5% discount code. It's going to be good till May 15, 2020, so if you're watching this after that, it's not going to work anymore, but I will have the code there for you guys. Um, she always says to use a light and a dark color, or light, medium, and dark color, so there is a variation of colors in here that you can do that with. So it's a nice, comprehensive little set, the 24. Um, so we'll try those out. Uh, what else am I going to... So the mushrooms. So let me get my inks. I thought I had everything ready to go, but I kind of don't. And then, um, yeah, oh, let's okay. get started. So first things first, we're going to make our background. And I have my magic mushrooms here in the turquoise -ish color, the orangey color, and the green. Um, I did put them in their cases because um, I was watching Lisa's videos. Oh, sorry, guys, for that sound. And um, <laughs> talking with her. Uh, and she was saying that as you use them, they get a little more moisture, and then they're a little more blendable. Um, so I definitely want to check that out. Just looking at this lighting, sorry guys, I have to reassess that. Okay, so we will use these and I have my little towel next to me ready to wipe it down if I need to. And all I did was kind of like a striated background, so whatever you want. It's nothing, you know, in particularly too uh, interesting as far as the way I laid down the color. So I'm going to use... Uh, water reactive inks by uh, Crafters Companion this is Honey Pot. And again, scrape, scrape, scrape across. And this one's not too dark, so I'm just gonna hold my paper here. Just kind of bring this across here. So I'm not doing anything too uh, technical, uh, just trying to get some color down. I'm gonna leave this to the side here and get some green going. Oh my gosh, I was gonna say, um, <laughs> my neighbor got a quad for his son and since, you know, people can't leave the house or do things, uh, he's been riding up and down and it's so loud. <laughs> we live in a cul-de-sac. There's like nowhere for him to go other than pretty much in front of my house and back and I'm like, are you, Serious? Because that might cut into my <laughs> ability to craft, so, or to make videos, you know, whenever the kids are um, giving me time. Now I gotta make sure my neighbor kid is giving me <laughs> time to craft. Can't believe that. But that was kind of funny. All right. And I chat with her all the time, but I'm not gonna say, hey, how about you tell your son not to use that here? Obviously, they don't mind. So anyway, I'm just going to keep working this, adding color, just making a background. I'll probably go back to the yellow in just a minute. 
and continue blending that. And this is an orangey yellow, just so you know, so the tone is a little bit different than if it was just like a bright yellow. I should probably use like lemon tonic or something whenever I do this. Oh. It's not a video of mine if I don't drop something. Okay, so all I want to do is just put down color. And then what I did was um, take a spritzer. Uh, we'll do the mini mister and just spray a little bit on here so the mini mister is very um, fine okay so it might remove quite a bit of your color see like that and then I'm going to also open it up and just kind of flick so larger areas get sucked up and the longer you let this sit the more the water reacts with your ink but just something like that so I'm going to let this dry for a second, remove some of these things, get these guys cleaned up again. I just give them a little misting. A little squeeze, squeeze to get the color off. And then you dry them on another area of your towel. And if there's no color like that, then we're good to go. Okay, I'll be right back once I clean up. Okay, so before I put um, my inks away, at least those inks, I'm going to use my background stamp. And as you can see on my card, I stamped in this top corner. You can stamp at the bottom, whatever you want, right? Just a little background. So I'm going to take that blue color. And let me think. I want to stamp in this top corner. So I'm going to put this down here in this area. And just kind of smooth that down. You can put this on a stamping block and stamp it if you like, but just kind of quickly get some of those down there pretty and okay let's uh, move on to the next uh, Actually, parts of the tutorial you. so I stamped the word smile and you know how I stamped that I just had this ink where is it I guess I used Friar Brown, and I had thought about it after I did this card, so I didn't have anything here. I thought, oh, hey, maybe it needs a little something. So I stamped the word smile from this set, and all I did was literally bring this out. I inked up just the word, the part that says smile. Hope you can see that. And I've cleaned off anything else that might stamp, right? The, le the letters or the little smile like line underneath there. And I try to keep this as straight as I could. And I try to keep my paper as straight as I could and just laid it down and very carefully kind of rubbed over it just to make sure. And that's how I did that. <laughs> okay, so I eyeballed it. It works pretty well. You know, why change it? Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to stamp again on my glossy paper. I love the way it looks. If you want to stamp on regular paper, I'll show you right now what that might look like. <clears throat> really quickly the other day I was kind of playing with these um, other stamps and just so I can kind of give you an idea like these guys were stamped with um, this was the these are just colors from Crayola <laughs> just the little pipsqueak markers my daughter has a ton of them and they're usually dried out and horrible but you can reconstitute those too just put a little water drops in there but that's Crayola and then this one up here sorry I had a little sneeze this one up here is from the uh, Diamond Press uh, markers. So a little richer in color, not too different. It's kind of hard to tell because this is more of a detail die where this one's more, or a stamp where this one's more of a background stamp or a um, shadow stamp. But, so that'll give you an idea. And that's also flat paper, right? This is just regular paper. So it does give a different look. So we have our glossy paper. I'll get that ready. We have our card here. And I probably should have dried this now. You look at it, it's kind of feathering a little bit. But that's going to be covered up. And um, the background paper, right? I had dried this one before I moved on. So um, <clears throat> it makes a little bit of a difference. So I want to talk about this for a second. We are going to use our stamp. Great. Obviously, we're going to use the stamp. 
it is a shadow stamp. It has an S on the packaging. Um, that really is kind of like if you're shopping, obviously, like at the expo and you see her booth and you see that there's an S. By the way, she says to use this carrier at times. Look how thick it is. It's super thick. You can use all kinds of stuff for that. Apertures and boxes. I'm going to put that away in a minute. <clears throat> so we're going to color this one. Um, it's so cute. I just think it's so adorable. Uh, so that's fine. But what I want to mention is, let me get this on here is the dies. <clears throat> so these dies are really fun. Um, so she does different dies, like the combo set that I showed with the flowers yesterday, or whenever I had to release this. It cuts out and it cuts it out, right? It cuts out the flower and you're good to go. You just move on. And then it has some fun things, like some dimensional pieces that you can pick up, right? Very cool. So this one, it has the inner die and then the outer die. The inner die is very detailed. You can emboss it. You can. You don't have to just cut. You can only cut it into your paper if you don't want to um, cut the whole thing out. And I might show you what that looks like. I don't really want to mess with this too much. Um, that might be for a different video. Let's leave that for another video. Because what you can do is run this through after you've stamped and everything. You run this through just with your embossing mat. And then like if you were going to emboss. And all it does is push the detail into your paper but doesn't cut it out. So then your card has this really cool you know, squishing, like puffiness to it in detail, but not cut out. Or you're gonna cut out like I'm gonna show you right now, but it has little areas on the outer edge where it's not cut. See right here, there's like a, I can stick my fingernail in it. So she calls that a kiss cut. So what happens is it doesn't completely remove from your paper, but almost completely removes from whatever you're cutting out of, right? And so that's for different reasons. You can use it in different ways. And then you have the outer outline that does a shadow if you want to cut out the whole back completely or use them both together, right? Which is pretty much what I did here. It's the shadow, but with this cut within it. And so then I have some movement and it cuts out like a little frame. You can use this for a sh uh, shaker card. And I'm kind of thinking maybe I should do a shaker today just to show you. That would be fun. So I might do that. But let's get to the stamping and we'll talk about that. So there's lots of different ways to use the dies. So that's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, so we have our paper. We have this. Let's open this guy up. And uh, I think Lisa yesterday or recently showed how to, uh, again, juice up your markers if they run out of juice. I saw comments from people saying theirs are seven years old. They still haven't run out of, uh, you know, they still work really well. But if they were to dry up, and this is with any water-based marker, you can always pop in some water, just like I showed you guys a long time ago how to juice up your alcohol ink markers. This is so cute. The little handle and everything. So let's say you have this locked. You can still use your handle, but the handle also locks, so that's nice. Cute. They stay in there really nicely. And let's go from there. Okay. Um, I'm going to pick out some colors just to have them. So I always want to use black. I know I want brown. Um, maybe this dark brown. Um, for the birds, I'm going to use like yellow and orange, light blue and dark blue. So there are three shades of blue in here, but I'm going to use the lightest and the darkest one. And then what? What did I use the first time? There's like a little blue guy. Sorry. Um, green and yellow, orange and red. Let's use those. And then, do I need some greenery? Yes, <laughs> I need green for like leaves, possibly. Okay, so these are all the colors I'm gonna use here. And let's just get started. So let's say I have a little bird. I'm just gonna mix these up. I don't know what colors we're doing. So let's, I'm going with the light, the lightest color. This is a lot juicier than, but again, they're brand new, so I would expect that. Yellow, let's, Add in some orange. Again, you want to color the whole thing. You're not like making lines. I'm so sorry about the lighting. It's, there we go. It's a little too harsh there. Um, again, go from the lightest to the darker color. So now I'm going to take like this orange and go in here, make this guy orange. So I'm trying to see where his little whole body is and, you know, and come in with some red. And if you really want them to blend more than just like what I'm doing, you can come back in with the lighter color and kind of blend it in, but it's not really necessary in my opinion. Then I'm gonna take the light blue. Again, I'm keeping it really tight as far as like covering the whole surface, right? And then we can come in with some dark blue. I don't know, just in here. 
So now I'm going to focus on the little berries. There's a lot of little red berries around the edges here. I didn't do the little bird feet, but we'll get to that in a minute. Again, these are supposed to, they're designed, or that's just how it works with red rubber stamps, that it stays wet. If this is a clear stamp, I usually huff on it, like, oh, <laughs> after I'm done. But, um, you know, do whatever you like. Uh, there is some green, not too much, but there are some little green leaves that I think I ignored the first time I did this. So, definitely will go in there. And again, those little leaves can just be brown, too. You don't have to do anything special. Okay. I am going to bring in the black and color the little eyes, the little beak, and the little feet. Feet, eyes, beak. And that's pretty good. Also with the black, you just kind of take it and make dots here and there, because for whatever reason, that just gives the thing more <laughs> dimension. There's another little green leaf I missed here, but that's okay. All right. And now I'm going to take my brown. It's really dark. And do the rest of like all the sticks that are out here, right? And the frame. Just because it looks nice. You can do whatever you like. You can go with two different browns. I just went with the dark brown. Right? And if you miss part of the frame, that's the easiest thing to fix at the end because you just kind of come in and color it again with your marker. Around there. And you can kind of take a look and see that you got everything. I think that's pretty good. Sometimes she'll take black and put some dots on the frame too. Just whatever. Okay. And as you can see, it's still pretty juicy. Like if you look at it, it's still wet looking. <clears throat> I was still anyway, just in case. And if you're going to make this into a card, you want to really center it so that <clears throat> your card is really nice and cute. Sorry, I woke up this morning with those allergies. Again, she usually says count to three, but I really like to make sure <laughs> this marries up. So there we go. Aww. So pretty. And then that's water-based marker, so all you do is wipe this off with a towel, maybe it gets a little bit moist, and you're good to go. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry for a second before um, I go to the next spot. You don't really have to do that, but what I was trying to explain to you guys is, you got this, you put it on here, you know, you can make yourself a guiding window or whatever, but I did make it a little bit crooked though, and I just told you guys, if you're gonna use it as the center of your card, you want it straight, right? Um, but anyway, I would tape this down and then just use your rubber mat, whatever you emboss with, right? So I'm just using the Empress Mini one here, um, which is just wide enough. And then your plates and run it through so that the embossing comes in and it's not cut out. It's just divoted in there. So that's just an idea. But I'm going to completely cut this out. So when we cut this out, you can just cut this section and it'll be very delicate. It's just a little frame that you just have here. And um, that's not quite what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up as best I can. And again, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm kind of looking at the birds, like where they are, kind of seeing where these little edge pieces are, where this berry is, kind of getting a good idea that way. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use the outer frame because I want to cut out the whole thing. And the outer frame has some good room, so don't worry about that. But again, just line that up so you have the, about the same amount of white space all around. And I am going to tape this because obviously we're using two dies. We do not want them to move at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to cut this out with my marquee. And what's fun about the marquee is it's really, it cuts this thing out really tight. And what I mean by that is like, the marquee is pretty snug whenever you send something through. That's how it makes sure it cuts. And um, it goes through ridiculously tight. So I'm just going to flip my marquee plate over. Ooh. But again, if you do this with like another machine, you can do your embossing and everything if you still want. And you can still emboss it even if you're cutting the whole thing out. I was just giving you an idea um, of just embossing. 
again, Lisa always says, look at the back and make sure it's all cut out before you remove it. And you can see everything's cut perfectly. So I am going to remove these things. And she also has the tip of when you go to remove them to peel, well, first of all, this is stuck down. So you know what I'm saying, I use tape. <laughs> but um, to peel your item away from the die. And she also gives the tip of before you even cut to rub a lint, what's it called? A dryer sheet all around because it helps pop out your die, your die cut, I guess should I say. So I'm gonna work with this very carefully and I'm gonna take a second to really make sure I don't tear anything and I'm gonna get it out and I will be right back. As I'm working with this, I wanna give you a little tip. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this outer frame because it's really easy to come out. But this little guy, right? He's the most intricate one. Is go ahead and pop as much as you can of your like your berries or whatever features that might be really small. And that's kind of what I was telling you, it kind of embosses anyway because this marquee has so much pressure that it really pushes through in those areas anyhow. This is a piece that just cuts out, so don't worry about that. But, um, you know, be gentle with it. And keep kind of popping and grabbing the pieces as you need that okay, pops out there. Too. And also I was going, I was kind of releasing areas at a time, so it <clears throat> comes off really nicely. So I want to show you what I mean about the kiss cut feature. So let's say you had centered this on your card because you wanted this to be the main thing, right? So you have a piece of card, you stamped it, you did your thing. And all you wanted it to do was cut out the detail, but not cut out your little guy. You would use this middle one right the detailed one and it it will not remove it completely even though it cuts out completely it will not remove it completely from your card and that's basically what i'm showing you here see this is the frame you think it would be separate but see right here there's like a little kiss cut there's a little tiny little ticker kind of holding this to this so what you do is just pop it off so let's say you just wanted that little inner frame that's very delicate but you don't you know you want to use it so just remove it from the excess paper just um, go around and remove it, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep it <laughs> and I want to pop out all the extra little pieces that don't belong And we're good to go again. She always makes cute little inventive things on her, you know uh, Dies so like this one his little bird wings his little wings uh, Open up and this one does too and then as you stick things down the berries can be moved around if you want So I'll show you that in a minute. So what I'm gonna do is I think let's go ahead. We'll we'll make it a shaker card which is a different thing just because I'm just feeling the mood to make a shaker card so let me grab some acetate and we'll cut that out okay guys I was thinking about using the um, the marquee but because uh, now we have our little sheets to help us cut acetate but it's a little bit bigger and you can still work with this if you only have the marquee to be honest go ahead get your you know your acetate get your metal sheet I know it's hard to see but there's acetate Put it on there, you know, tape it down so it doesn't move. Put it on there, run it through, and this little extra piece that hangs off, pick it up, put it back on there, and then run it through your machine again. And it'll cut that extra, right? So now you have your piece. But to make it easy for me right now, since I do have other machines, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this out on my Gemini. So I'm just gonna use my metal plate. Got the acetate, we're using the outer die, obviously. Plastic shim, magnetic shim, Hopefully this doesn't shift. And top cutting plate. And I'm just gonna run it through. Again, if you're gonna use a Gemini the whole time, you could have you know, done the embossing and everything, but I just kind of wanted to keep it simple. But now that I changed my mind, I'm making a, a shaker. You have to do some, you know, I could have just done it from the beginning. I haven't used this machine in a while. That sounded bad. I was like, is this cracking? No. And here's our little acetate piece. Okay, so I'm gonna put that there so we don't lose it. Put that acetate away so I can use it another time. And to be honest, since I hadn't planned on making this into a shaker card, I'm not 100% sure what I wanna do. So I think I'm just gonna stick this to this and then I'll find some um, stuff. So obviously this is hard to see. I'm gonna try to shine a light so you can kind of see it better. We're gonna stick this together. Okay. So I'm just gonna get you know, uh, yeah, I'm gonna use this glue. Um, and then again, be careful, because if there's, you know, his little wing that I want to kind of put up, or if you want to put the um, the berries up, just pay attention to where you're putting glue. So that way it's not holding down your berries or your wings if, you know, you don't want the wings. So I'll do that. All around here. I do like the berries having some movement, so I'm trying to just be on the very edge of this thing. So I hope that makes sense. Oh, that ran out of glue completely. 
And I just saw that there's two little pieces that need to be punched out. That little piece and that little piece. Even more intricate. <laughs> there we go. So I hope I didn't confuse you. It's just that that's how her dies work. So there's lots of frames and other things that you can do with it. But just know that so you can have the best use of your dies and have fun with that. So as far as the shaker is concerned, because this is very delicate, I am going to have to really think about this. I am going to get my foam tape. It's not impossible, it's just, you know, not super duper easy. I'm going to take my foam tape and cut it down. Uh, let me see. Like in this area, it'll be fine. It'll probably be okay if I just use the thickness that it is. But there's areas where it's a lot thinner, like this will be okay here, you know? On the other side, you don't see it. But coming from there this way, I had to kind of stop and make a thin piece. And I'm just eyeballing this as I go. But I guess really it's not the biggest deal. So I'm going to continue just putting down some foam pieces. Like I'm going to miss this area. I'm going to put a very thin piece here. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a piece and try my best to cut it thin. Hey, these are nonstick. So my Tim Holtz scissors, I've tried cutting foam tape with this and it just sticks all over. And especially if your foam is old because it just has a horrible feeling to it. So that's pretty good because it did not stick all over that. So what I'm gonna do is take like this little skinny piece and put it right here along the line, okay? So of course you don't have to do this. This is taking more work. My old card, this card, all I did was stick it down. <laughs> and I was done, right? So now we're just stepping it up a little bit. But, um, you know, again, that's up to you. So let me continue. I'll continue putting down little pieces. When I come back, I'm just going to have frame this out. Just this little frame. Okay, guys, that was actually not that hard because it was only two areas where I had it. So I only had to use that little thin piece that I had cut in half anyway. So pretty easy. Again, if you want it all the way up here, then you would have to leave openings and kind of come around this area. Do you know what I'm saying? So that the, uh, it can come up here. But I'm not going to be that picky about it. So... I have my card base, standard A2 size card. This is eight and a half by five and a half. I'm gonna fold it at four and a quarter. Again, um, you know, I am gonna do a little distressing on this. Um, I'm gonna use my close to my heart chocolate ink. And since I always just kind of use this kind of thing for that, I'm not gonna be too worried about it. I got a little bit lighter, like in my other one there. I like the way that came out better than this other edge. That's what happens when you distress holding things up. <laughs> I've noticed it doesn't come out as nice as when you lay it down and kind of come in here blending. But we're not really looking to blend, we're just looking to lay down some color. Okay, so we're almost done, guys. So I'm just going to. So I hope you guys like the tutorial, um, kind of seeing those markers in action. They do have very bright, pretty colors. Again, even Lisa will tell you, you know, any water-based marker, you know, do what you can. You, do what you do, do what you like. Um, I just thought those markers were too cute. I could not pass them up. <laughs> so there's that. And I've, and then I've, you know, been going to the shows for so many years. Like I always see them and I'm always like, oh, I should get those. And so I finally popped on them, trying to support companies that are having a hard time right now, I'm sure, without doing their expos like they normally would, right? Um, let's see here. This is the worst part of this. <laughs> so I'm going to go around this whole thing and take the backings off as not to waste your time, and I'll be right back. Okay, so there's that. And, you know, I guess it... You know, I heard people saying about red rubber stamps, and, like, this is the thing. Red rubber stamps are the OG. They're the original. So I guess it depends on how old you are, because I'm sure, depending on how old you are, you've always been around, like... Um, acrylic stamps or photopolymer and I'm not sure why 
people went towards that. I guess because you can see where you're placing it, and that's the thing with uh, red rubber stamps is that you can't really see where you're placing them, but they do have placers. I'll probably find mine. I have this one. It's like a basically an acetate, but it's like a thick plastic sheet, and then like a T-square. And so you stamp your stamp you know, on the clear acetate, and then you put it where you want it. You get your T-square, line that up, remove the plastic thing, put your stamp, and then now you know exactly where you're stamping. So they had, you know, things for that. But red rubber stamp, and then, you know, they're a little more costly to make. So I guess that's why people went to these other materials. But red rubber is like the OG classic. You're going to get a great impression every time stamp. So I'm trying to see where I want to put this, and I think right here is just fine. Oh, I should keep this straight, but... There we go. And the thing is, when you're laying down your little strips, make sure to butt them up really close so that you don't have gaps so your glitter doesn't fall out or whatever it is that you're using. And this is just a mixed sequin pack from Crafter's Companion. They're a couple bucks a pack. Of course, you have to order from Crafter's Companion, so you might have, uh, you know, the shipping associated with that. But make a nice order and you're good to go. And I don't know why. Every time I put this down, I always think I did it straight and I did a little bit off. I need to go this way a little bit. Um, but anyway... Look how cute that is. And that did not take that much time. It's super detailed. People are going to be like, wow. And if you want to stick these pieces down because you did the foam, you can put your 3D glue gel. You can put foam up there too. But what I want to show you um, is, again, to play around with these little things. So like the berries, since I didn't really stick them down, I can kind of give them some, some lift. This one I stuck down. <laughs> I didn't stick them all down, but some of them I did stick down. So I just kind of get in here with like a pokey tool and just pick them up. So now you have a little more um, dimension. So I'm going to go around and doing that with whichever berries I left unglued. And of course the little wings. Lift that up. Lift that little wing up. Super cute. So thanks for watching guys. I will have the links for you. Um, I'm going to keep the reviews coming. You guys saw in the initial haul all the ones I got. I did order quite a few more. <laughs> so those are on their way. Um, I just... I love things that are fun and new. And what's funny is when I say fun and new, uh, Lisa, Local King, with at least 15 years they've been around because since I remember going to the first expos I went to. So I'm assuming I'll ask her about that. Um, and, you know, some of her designs are true uh, from the beginning of time of her, of her company. So it's just um, new to some people because they don't know about the company. But also it's just very inventive. Just her dyes, the stamps, I love it. So you'll see more of them. And, of course, I'll continue reviewing all the different... Uh, things that interest me <laughs> here and there and i will see you guys at the next one bye now again all things being equal i try to use the same kind of colors i you know was logging off and taking pictures but i noticed when i put them together i'm like wow those are really different so this is the local king markers right and these are similar colors but these are the um uh diamond press markers still really pretty but very different, right? I try to stick with the same kind of colorway, but um, as you can see, they did have a different effect. So you can see that looks gorgeous by itself. This is gorgeous by itself. When you put them together, they do have differences, but just wanted to kind of follow up with that comparison. All right, I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.